Hi, everyone. We are Hello. live. So, uh, very ex- excited to be here. I'm just going to like take over my narrow little space on our screen. It's Lola and Tigre. Tigre from the Wild Messengers team. And we are running a super awesome live video today to reveal a couple of deck secrets, including the latest prototype design of the cards and the box. <laughs> What was that? Was that Miss Teresa's audio? I think that might have been. That may have been. Hmm. Uh, so. Excuse any technical glitches. Yeah, too. we're just playing with some new technology right now. So you should be seeing us, and we're going to bring in Teresa and Tanya in just a moment. They're hanging out with us on Skype behind the scenes. And so we're going to reveal the card prototypes and the boxes, which is like this close to what it's going to look like in final print. So basically, we're going to launch our Kickstarter. We'll talk about when that's happening. And once the Kickstarter closes, we're pushing pushing send on the order. So there's going to be none of this like, Kickstarter, everybody's excited. And then like 10 months later, you get this deck you forgot you ordered. And it's like nothing like what you thought it was going to be like, that is not what we're doing here. We are really picky about the details and also pretty much ready to push publish on the whole project. So it's super exciting. We're going to reveal that. We're going to introduce our special guest, the tarot lady, Teresa Reed, and uh, do some fun games with the deck, including reading this energy of the, the new moon that's upon us. When is it? Is it early this morning, this coming morning, Teresa? Let's bring Teresa it's, on. It's actually... Go- Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. The new moon is going to be in Libra, and it is coming tonight. So we've got some time to get ready for it. In fact, the exact time is going to be 1147 Eastern Daylight Time. Awesome. awesome. I like Noted. that. 1147, which is also like 1111 numerologically. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a very potent new moon. I love that. Okay, so Teresa, while we have you on, you want to introduce your fabulous self to our Wild Messengers crew? Sure. Uh, I'm, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. My name is <laughs> Teresa Reed. I'm known as the Tarot Lady, and I am the author of the Tarot Coloring Book, and I'm also the co-author of the upcoming Tarot for Troubled Times with Shaheen Miro. Excellent. So, yeah. So exciting. So Yay! We're we're super happy to have you here. And uh, the reason we asked her on is, first of all, I love Teresa. I have known her now online for eight years, pretty much. Yeah. And followed on her journey of just, you know, really stepping into her own, which is uh, awesome, of course, to witness. And she's just a tarot pro. And the fact that she's excited about this project, our like little project, means so much to me. Um, and I respect her knowledge immensely. We got the tarot coloring book by her to kind of double check our work because I'm writing these cards and I want them to really be true to the tarot. I don't want them just to be an animal oracle deck. There's like a million of those. And the few decks that are tarot and animal driven, I find the connections between the cards and the animal messages to not be as strong as I'd like them to be. And so I'm really looking to her, like, very succinct and very clear languaging and, like, super deep understanding of these cards to guide me and making sure that I deliver to the tarot community because that's what really matters, something that's a, a truly useful tool besides just being pretty lipstick. So, um, you know, I appreciate you, t- Teresa, for creating such an awesome, fun coloring book that also teaches so much. Thank you so much. And I'm very excited about this deck also because I'm a huge animal lover. You know, animals... Yeah, they're my thing. I love animals. I love critters. Um, you could always usually find me with a cat on my lap. So the idea of animal-inspired tarot, I'm all about that. Yeah. Excellent. And speaking awesome. of which, we brought on Tanya Castile, the amazing artist of those specific animals. Yay! Those are amazing Yay. ears. We. Oh, we're yeah, crazy. I love your ears. Those are like oh, plant animals. Thank you. Huh? It, it is plant animal. I love it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and Tigre spent some time brightening up the artwork for Tanya's watercolors so that this final print design really shows like the immense vibrancy that Tanya's put into these animals and and the energy that she's infused into them. I mean, if you listen to our podcast episode on this wildlife, you heard that Raven was the one who started this whole wild journey for Tanya and then brought us all together 
And so we raven, want mapache. Well, raven for Tanya, for her, and then mapache for us, the raccoon. So we wanted all that art to really like stand out and pop. So is everybody excited to see what the deck's gonna look like? Yeah, throw some yeah. hearts, throw some thumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to see some hearts. Excellent. So we'll switch our cam to the deck cam. The deck cam. Dun dun dun. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and there are ah, wild animals inside. Oh my gosh, you can't contain them. <laughs> stay, 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 stay. So <laughs> here they are. Da 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 da. All right. With, let's do unbox it, these do puppies it, do and spiders and geckos and oh my. <laughs> and definitely throw anything in the chat if you got questions for our special guest, for us the creators. Okay, okay, hold on. This is like too exciting. All right, are you ready to see what this sexy box is going to look like? <gasps> so excited, Kelly says. All right, mm -hmm. do do do. Look at that. Beautiful shrink wrapping. Yeah. And although we are ecologically minded, sometimes you just got to protect your shit, you know? So we don't want these these boxes and decks to come to you damaged goods. So that's why they're protected. So here's the box. And on the back, you've got a little preview of the cards. And what it says is, Earth and its creatures are speaking. Are you listening? We walk not alone, but graced with thousands of messengers. Guided by the alchemical wisdom and t animal intuition, this tarot deck's 78 animals span the four elements and spirit's essence. Use alone or with the wild messenger's guidebook and call forth wisdom and answers while awakening the wild in you. So exciting! Here's like the UPC code. Oh, yeah. Sexy. ISBN. <laughs> We're doing us upright. Little thing we found out is that tarot cards are actually registered in the Library of Congress as a book themselves, yes. not just the guidebook. Like, yeah, oh, so we've got what do you know? The I didn't even know that. Isn't that the cool? The things you learn when you research how to make your own tarot deck. <laughs> All right. Oh, hi, Jennifer. So let's move this off Love of my sacred you. altar. And one of the things that I think is important when you're throwing cards is to have a space devoted to them. So I'm going to turn mm. these so that you can see them. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, hello, fool. They even put it that. in the right <laughs> order. Learn research how to make your own tarot deck. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh we're echoing in some We're audio. echoing somewhere. That's adorable. All right, make sure Facebook's off for us. It Did is. It off? I think. And you guys, I don't see the deck cam, so I'm not seeing it. Okay. It's it's back. It should be. It's on Facebook, so you won't see it. Teresa. Yeah, it's on Facebook. Ah, got it. That's so, it so here I'm gonna pull it up though for you. Are some of the beautiful cards? Dun dun dun, and the very snaky backs. So let's see. I'm just gonna pull one of these so you can see what this gorgeousness looks like. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> there, there they are. See how like mm, delicious the wow. cards. Wow. And I'm here of the snake, so of course, right away. <laughs> I'm excited. That's awesome. So we have put lots and lots of time and effort, and by we, I mean Tigre, mm. oh, yes. <laughs> to getting these to be absolutely Thanks, symmetrical, top to bottom. Yeah. And the snake print is also reversible top to bottom, as well as all that texture. Uh, they're so fun. Andrew. So when you line them up together, I'll just show you what this looks I like. I can hold this one. It makes a seamless helix of transformation. Ooh. Do, do, do. And that's to honor also the genetic code of DNA and the cosmic serpent, which mm -hmm. creates this existence as we're experiencing it now and yeah. just honors that wisdom that serpents have always been allotted and also attacked for, too. So mm -hmm. trying to not be so afraid of that which can serve. Mario asks when and where will these be available? These are launching on Kickstarter, Mario, and we are just doing some of the pre-launch excitement right now, but we're opening Kickstarter on October 11th at 11, 11 a.m. So the way that we did this is so that there are, are uh, no obvious reversals as you're pulling cards. Not every reader works with t reversals, uh, but when you do, you don't want to have it be obvious at the outset. You want it to come through the intuition um, as the reading is happening. Is that right, Teresa? Absolutely. And by the way, for people who don't read reversals, you can still get a very good reading if you don't read them. Absolutely. Uh, but I work with reversals, and I find that they add some really subtle nuances. So I actually encourage people to play with them. Cool. Excellent. 
I love that. And, uh, you know, for us in our guidebook, we're not necessarily building in interpretations of reversals, but we are going to put some guidance in the front of the book about if your card is reversed, this is some Mm -hmm. ways to interpret what is being written here about that animal's medicine and where you might want to take that internally or, you know, flip your perspective on it or things like that. So that piece is really fun. Um, And when it comes to... Just before we get into what the energy reading of the new moon and just this week and what animals show up, what would you say, Teresa, uh, when it comes to developing a strong relationship with a deck? You know, so people are going to mm-hmm. be really excited about this deck, and and yet, you know, it may feel like kind of cold at first or just not a strong intuitive connection. So, what are some of the things that you do when you get a new deck and you really want to have like a strong affinity for it? Well, the main thing is, just like when you're getting to know somebody, you want to spend a lot of time with it. Yeah. And so what I really want to get um, acclimated to the deck's energy, that means I'm going to be working with it every day. Now, that may mean doing a card for the day pull with that particular deck, or maybe just doing some shuffling while I'm watching television. You know, you want to just spend time with it. You want to be handling it as much as possible. And looking at the cards on a regular basis are going to help you to really connect with it. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. The other thing I like to do is I like to cleanse my decks, um, especially when I first get them. So the way that I will do that is both with stones. So you see there's stones here on my little mini tarot altar. I also use smoke to clear. And one of my favorites is cedar. And this is actually cedar harvested from a dear friend up in Vancouver from a precious tree that she was connected with. So I really feel like this is such beautiful, rare personal medicine. I'm just going to cleanse this deck since I just opened it. So exciting. Just wave the cards through the smoke. And what I feel like this does is it just neutralizes whatever's been infused into the cards in their creation and the printing process uh, in transportation, in boxing, and all of that. And it just returns them to a neutral state so that they can begin to receive your energy as the reader and as the, the intuitive bridge, you know, between what the card has to say and the cosmos, which is what you're channeling when you're doing a tarot reading. So I also like to have a dedicated space for my deck. It kind of creates that special relationship of, you know, you don't just get thrown anywhere. I have, you know, even if I take it with me, like I have this little piece of indigo dyed cloth that I made and specific stones that I work with. Um, because I believe that ritual has power and the more we ritualize some of these practices, the stronger we are when we work with them. Um, it's almost like the superstition, our camera is going a little crazy. Uh, it's almost like the superstition that baseball players have when they have to wear a certain pair of socks or, um, something like that. And it's not that the superstition has any weight. It's the power of the ritual that that has over the mindset of the player that's really making the difference. So the more you create a ritual, maybe around scent with your incense or your cleansing smoke, with your stones, with your tarot cloth, these things set your mind into a place where it's open and receptive for intuitive messages, and you're much more ready then to to truly channel. The heartbeat, the camera is like a heartbeat. It was yeah, totally it was. heartbeating. It was totally doing that. It's like that, that, that. It was like focus. All right, let's see. Tanya, are you ready to tap into some animal energies? Absolutely. Okay, let's bring Tanya up onto the screen. I'm bringing up Tanya. Da, 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 there she, there she is. is. Let's see. Bringing in the animals, too. It's awesome. Who wants to come and play with us for this new moon? So we'll just set the intention that the absolute most appropriate, powerful, positive guidance come through for this new moon for us all. And that this animal's message reaches the ears that need to hear it and the hearts that need to feel it. And let's see. I'm just going to pull one card. And just see. I'm going to close my eyes. We can all put our collective intentions 
into the animals. And they usually just wait for a pop from the deck if one hasn't fallen out or broken apart on its own. Waiting for that little like zing of heat and I feel it, it's right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> we have the soul of air, otherwise known as the Ace of Swords, Teresa. <laughs> wow. And that is so Ooh. perfect for this new moon, you guys. You know why? Because the moon in Libra is ruled by, it's an air sign. Yeah. And so the new moon is a new beginning, and air, uh, again, is Libra. So that's actually the perfect card for today's new moon. Of holy cats. It is. And holy cats is right, because holy this cats. is a puma. <laughs> And, and let's also mention that Tigre has been staring at this as I've been retweaking our deck design all day yesterday. Like, <laughs> and this is the oh, animal yeah. I kept looking at all there day yesterday. There she is. This is the puma. Wow. So, and yeah, Tanya, what kind of... Yeah, it was <laughs> so special that the puma it was actually a repaint because I had painted an original puma and the composition wasn't right for the deck, so I repainted it in a vertical format. And it's actually the very last painting I did for the deck, so it's like the Yay! last one. And wow. It's really special when I created it because um, it was actually the, the day and the night before I was having a really hard time and I went into a um, pretty dark space and I knew I needed to paint this puma and I needed to come out and it was like puma and I were working together that day and it was really... Mm. Like, I was Puma together, and we were, like, climbing out of whatever we were, and we were getting higher and higher, talking about the soul of air. Oh. I could feel myself lifting as I was doing the painting. Mm. So when you pulled that card, I was like, oh, <laughs> here's that one that came out. Yeah, the outlook is good. Um, I'm going so to see if I can find Just the guidance that came through in the guidebook, which is still in editing right now. But I would love to just share the raw. It's fun doing the reverse. The raw Puma deal, and then Teresa, I'd love your take on uh, anything else that the Ace of Swords has to say for today. So let me find it. <laughs> da da da. Where are you? <laughs> and then Lola, we would love to hear more about the Puma energy and oh, yeah. symbols from you as well. And I like the position of this cat. It's like it's crouching, waiting. Ready to pounce, ready to like spring up to the next phase. I love it. All right, well, here's right. what Puma has to say through our deck. The soul of air, Puma. Once in a powerful ceremony, it became clear that the power of will is an incredible force of creation. I received a message that at all times, consensus reality is being willed into existence by the collective. Not just by human willpower, mind you, but by the sheer force exerted by all beings as we co-create our world as part of the organism known as Earth. Puma is here to ask you, what are you willing to create? Not as in allowing, but actually willing with the force of your intent, focus, faith, and actions. Your focus acts like a magic wand, creating a narrow channel through which energy flows with incredible potency. If Puma has padded into your reading today, you are at a place of new beginnings. A new idea has come or will be arriving soon. This idea asks for your devotion and commitment. Are you willing to learn from the past but stop looking for an escape route or back doors behind you? To make this new idea take root, your focus is required. Even if it does not come to fruition in the ways you hope for, it will never have the chance to blossom at all without your fierce attention. Puma Speaks Without channeling your will, your personal power and empowerment is diminished. I'm here to remind you of the formidable potency available to you when you dare to focus. Have you been dreaming too small? Have you already decided at some level you can't really have what you want? These patterns of thinking sabotage your potential and prove to your fearful ego that you don't have what it takes to make it happen in your life. Though you do not ever have total control over your circumstances, you have absolute power when it comes to how to engage with life. It's time to stalk any patterns of codependency and victimhood like a hungry wildcat, to ferret out your unconscious beliefs, look to times in the past where you've said 
what you've said you want and your actual behaviors don't match up. For example, if you've declared that you want a deeply connected intimate partnership but withdraw and become cold any time conflict arises, or you say you want financial stability but continue to spend your money recklessly, these disconnects highlight an unconscious belief at play, which leads to unconscious and habitual behaviors that derail you from your desires. Invocation. Puma, give me strength and clarity I need so that I can see my unconscious beliefs and begin to change them with my actions. My dreams are worthy of my focus and devotion. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah. Thank you. Puma. Puma changed, um, really changed my life because it was one of the first wildcats that I came across, aside from tigers, when I started reading animal energies for clients. And I began to see the patterns at play with people who diminish their power and who don't believe they deserve a wildcat as a guide. Typically, the people who would think, oh, I'm a lioness or I'm this or that, that's not the, the medicine, so to speak, that they need. Um, for those who need wildcat medicine, it's usually the people who feel the least worthy of it, who feel the least connected to that sense of power within. We need that personal connection to our ferocity, to our agility, to our sure-footedness, to our flexibility. These are all things that the puma has to offer us. It's a strong animal. It is fierce. It is wild. It is unapologetic for adaptable. its appetites. It's adaptable. Um, one of the things that's fascinating about puma, even in comparison to other cats, is the flexibility it has with its spine. Its spine is among the most flexible of all the wild cats. And so as a metaphor, you can imagine, what does that mean to have a flexible back? It means you can rely on yourself. You have your own back, but you can bend. You're not rigid. You're not attached or fixed. You're willing to devote yourself something fiercely to it. But if time comes to shift, you can leap away on a dime. And I think that, to me, that's what that Ace of Swords really represents, is that like fierce clarity of thought, but a non-attachment to any sort of specific fruition. It's like the higher mind. Like, I know that all will be well. I don't know what that looks like, and I don't need to. I don't know. Anything you want to add to that, Miss Teresa, as you hear me? Well, I love it. I love listening to you. And um, I didn't know that pumas had flexible spines. That's yes. very interesting. Uh, you know, the Ace of Swords, it's all about the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. It's about the breakthrough when we are at our foggiest. And so when I see this card, I often see it as a card that symbolizes that you are about to get major clarity. Mm -hmm. You are going to get the opportunity to see things as you need to see them. It's also a card that symbolizes speaking your truth, leading with your truth, being open to hearing other people's truths. Mm -hmm. And you know what this new moon in Libra, the new moon in Libra is all about um, connecting with others authentically and honestly. It's time to clear the air with people. If you are having misunderstandings, it's time to embrace those conflicts and use them as an <laughs> opportunity for healing. <laughs> And, and also the Ace of Swords, this is the thing to think about, too, with the new moon in Libra. There's a change in the air. There's a change that's coming. And this is the time where everything in the world, not just in our individual lives, yeah. is getting ready to shift. There are new thinkers coming, new thoughts coming, new ways of doing things. What is Libra all about? It's about justice. So what I see the new moon in Libra as is a time where we can really start fighting for justice in the world. And what is the Ace of Swords doing? Well, they're grabbing hold of that sword and they're going for it. Yeah. So if you see something that is not good, that's not healthy, that needs to be changed. The other thing that the Ace of Swords would be telling you is, let us go ahead and seize the day. Let us take this moment and let's create fairness and justice for all. Mm. And what is that Puma doing? They're getting ready to leap. They're not waiting for someone else to take charge. They're going for it. And that is what we need to do when the Ace of Swords and New Moon and Libra are coming together. Mm -hmm. It's time to fight for what's right. It's time to fight the good fight. Yeah, this puma yeah. is not hiding. No, not at all. And we should do the right thing. Mm -mm. Or get discouraged. You know, this is an animal that's also been pursued and mm -hmm. been hunted for its beauty, been feared. And positive power 
has also been hunted like that, you know, and diminished and feared. Well, so, truth is also feared, too. Yeah. Think about that. When people come out and they're being true and they're being honest about things, that's really scary. And also it's scary for us to be true and honest, you know, because that means being vulnerable. That means really getting up there and saying, this is how I feel. This is what I'm thinking. This is who I am. Yeah. And that truth is really, really frightening for a lot of us. Yeah. But it's necessary. It's necessary. Right. And I think one of the reasons why it's so scary is that that's our power. And if we access our power, then we're responsible for it. And also, we have to learn not to fear it. Because what we're seeing out there is a projection of power shadow. So it's real easy to shy away from our truth, to shy away from doing the right thing, because that diminishes our power, and therefore we don't have to deal with potential side effects or shadows of our power coming onto play. So I feel like, yes, it's scary, and yes, this is what we need to channel inside of ourselves to just face that fear. This puma is not afraid of the hunter. Uh -uh. The puma's like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this is so excellent to hear both of you speak about this card that I didn't even really, um, I didn't even check in actually what the card was that I was painting. I was like, all right, puma, yes, let's do the puma thing. And what I was going through, it was definitely the darkness that I was having to face was my own truth and what was actually what was really best for me and healthiest for me in this relationship that I was in, what was going to be best for both of us. Yeah. Um, and looking at that, and it was really challenging and really also empowering for me and everyone else for me to step into that Puma power. Yes. And I was feeling all of that when I was painting it, so it was amazing to hear you both speak about that through the card. And it was on the edge of a breakthrough for you. Like, this card helped you break through a place yes. where... You needed to have that pathway forward and see it and not get lost. And this is a very clear-sighted cat. Um, it, of course, like all felines, sees lots well in the clarity. dark. Yeah, lots of clarity and lots of courage in, in pursuing that clarity uh, and, and feeding itself well. The other thing about Puma that I think is important as we think about stepping into a new dream collectively and individually, especially on this new moon, is that Pumas don't eat ants. <laughs> They eat giant <laughs> hunks of flesh. <laughs> so we need to not dream small or be satisfied right. with tiny little bites that are keeping us just on the edge of starvation. So many of us have been willing to accept very small morsels of metaphorical food. And to dream a bigger dream collectively, we got to really go for it and, and take a big bite. Um, and, and go after the big prey, go after that at the very top, right? Like that's where all this crap is happening. So don't start small uh, and, you know, start at the top and at the bottom and meet in the middle. Like we really need to go for those big chunks uh, and not dream too small. And even if we do dream big, it's still too small. Um, that's what I'm consistently shown over and over and over again. So let's really go for that vision of what we want to co-create as a culture here and elsewhere. Uh -huh. I adore this so much. So would you all be interested in seeing what the book is going to look like on the inside? Yes. <laughs> so this is still in process with our layout designer, the fabulous koala, Jason. But this, da, 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 let me see. I'm going to put it up on this, this camera Ooh. here. Uh -huh. So you can try to make it real simple and easy to find each animal inside of the book. Very clearly laid out. All the times that the animal speaks to you, each animal will speak directly to you in addition to having an interpretation. So this little box over here is going to be that. And each animal has an invocation as well so that you can toss your intent into working with this animal and ask for their specific help. Let's see. There we go. So this is what I'm like trying to get it positioned right. This is what it's going to look like, give or take. It's pretty close. So you'll have an image of the card. And each card, I mean, this is one of the minor arcana cards. And so you can imagine each major arcana is probably going to have three or four times the content. So this book is going to be hundreds of pages. And mm. it is essentially like high-end mentorship with me through the voices of the animals. And every single thing I can possibly tell you to create your truest life. And these are all things that I have seen over and over and over again and working with thousands of people. Um, and we all know how friendly the animal messengers are, right? Tanya and I have talked about this extensively. It's so much easier to hear it from the mouth of a wolf 
than from, um, you know, even a mentor sometimes. <laughs> so the animals deliver in a way where it's like, oh, well, the wolf told me, so okay. <laughs> it's way more acceptable. Way more. And I say wolf on purpose because Teresa did a reading with me ages ago back when I was doing yes. doing that, and she was a, a wolf, a red wolf. So, yeah, very, very magical, witchy, hierophant. That's the wolf in this deck. <laughs> awesome. And that's a perfect, actually, that's a perfect card, for, uh, animal for the hierophant. Because when you think about uh, wolves, they certainly do have something about them that feels very majestic and very spiritual and... Uh, wise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they make a noise they're not afraid to share that wisdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I love it so what else do we have on our little docket today Mr. T. Ray well we have our Kickstarter that's going live this Thursday at 11 11 so exciting on the 11th we really enjoy yes. master numbers mm -hmm. so we're currently working furiously behind the scenes mm -hmm. on getting everything ready making sure it's all sweet and set up Wednesday, we have another live where we're going to dive into some more shares that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and so this deck is going to have two bonus cards. Oh, wild Ooh. cards. Wild cards. And we're going to talk about that on So Wednesday. those will be revealed in our live on Wednesday. Yeah, we're very excited <laughs> about these because they're going to be very different and extremely wild compared to these wild animals. Yeah, and if they show up in your reading, it's going to add something magical. <laughs> So we have that, and then we also want to make sure that you don't miss out because we're only having a limited number of decks and guidebooks at a lower price. The That's, early bird special. Yeah, the early bird special for the Kickstarter. So be sure to, as best you can, have a friend, have a proxy, whatever. Jump on and get your deck and book if you want both or just the deck. And that's going to happen for the first, we said, 77 I believe so. People yeah, so we got a limited bird. quantity, and that's going to be the lowest price it's going to be available ever. Everywhere else going forward will be mm -hmm. the full retail price, so it's like a great time to get in on it and get your order in while you can claim that. And price. definitely, we have some really cool uh, stretch goals that yeah. we want to do so we can add fun stuff. This cost a fair bit to add just this spot. UV for the texture. But it's no longer a stretch goal because no our priority goal. is awesomeness. So yep. this is going so to be want it on in the there. deck. So it's just some small things. And you'll see that in the Kickstarter. Hopefully I can get a draft preview ready. I should have one for Wednesday so we can show everyone who's live to kind of see what the Kickstarter layout's going to be. The price, well, the early bird price is all going to be announced with the Kickstarter. So you'll have to tune in and find out all those details and then push order. <laughs> It's 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 not far and beyond what other decks are going for on yeah, no. Kickstarter. So nope. we're being reasonable. We understand people have budgets. Um, it's going to be five million dollars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, for us crazy tarot deck collectors, we oftentimes don't care. We want a deck. We want it. Yeah, exactly. I would not tell you how much I paid for the bo the Baroque Bohemian Cats tarot. Oh, nice. I wanted it bad. So uh, yes. Yeah. So. Yes, and that's true. The tarot collectors are going to love the crap out of this, and it's also not going to break their bank, so yeah, it's kind of a nice blend. And we can't do it without your support, so please share on your social media accounts with your friends, mm -hmm. get people to buy in, and if you know of shops that may carry it, please talk to them to send them our way, just wildmessengers.com slash wholesale, and if yeah. they want to get a wholesale account, we're accepting initial applications, applications so we can figure out how to make that awesome for them so they can spread the word and get this excellent, yeah. excellent thing that has lots of love and integrity behind it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been so <laughs> much fun and so much work. Tanya. Before we jump off, can you show off an animal spread of cards for all of us to see? <gasps> yes. Okay, I'm so let's get these going. I'll just kind of like flip some around so that we can see... All right, so there's a few. And Tigre, can you switch the camera for us to see, too? I will totally yeah. do that. Yeah, because currently they're on Skype and they don't get <laughs> to see these. So I'm going to just focus it solely on the cards. There and I'm going to go. go back here. And I'm going to just like, play some of these. Sometimes out. good being a geek and also overwhelming at times. <laughs> 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 there we go. Can you lovely ladies see that? Yes. Awesome. All right, here are some. Let's Wholesale. Find. Yep. You got it, Mr. Designer Jason. Save your 
Let's get some Save of these. The so there's a few of them. We've got the praying mantis. We have, of course, our puma, cardinal, manta ray, hippo, <sighs> chipmunk, sea turtle, owl, mouse. They may not look bright because of our amazing uh, overhead fluorescent Jaguar. lighting, but they're bright and they're awesome. We have a blue heron and a mountain goat and an otter and the flicker and the wild horse and gorilla and cormorant and moose. Okay, check out the moose. The moose is, moose so, is fun. so fun. Look at those antlers. So wow. amazing, right? Nice work, Tanya. <laughs> Thank you. Chameleon, my, my nemesis and also best medicine. Um, Tanya have. has excellent videos of her paintings in progress, yes. too. So follow her Black and the Panther. Tarot Lady on Instagram. Oh, look at the soul of her, this cute Aww. little tamarind. <laughs> you know, um, when I take the soul of earth, the tamarind monkey, to the art shows, I, I love how it's the soul of earth because so many people have come up to me and said, oh, that looks like the Lorax. Yes, mm. exactly. It does. It does. The You're garden right. of the cheese and says, so Perfect. Oh, I love those happy in my, accidents. In my body. Because oh, it's not like we did that on purpose. No. <laughs> but the animals told me where they wanted to go when I listened. <laughs> There's Ladybug. Oh, here we go. Wait, wait. Look at that. Lioness. Oh, love that one. The colors. Isn't the panther yeah, amazing? Yeah, so this would be the queen of fire. She's But she's, a lioness. she's the teacher of fire in this deck. There's mm -hmm. Black Panther, the moon. La Luna. Swan. Mm. Little frog. Oh, look at the new beaver. Ah, we did a new that. beaver. Thanks, Tanya. So this one. So yeah. cool. Gorgeous. Here's uh, the Empress, otherwise known as Gaia. Shift. That's the hanged man. Because bats, you know. <laughs> Hang upside down. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> bats. Initiate of Earth is the vulture. Oh, this was a fun one to write. I cannot wait to share vultures medicine with everybody because it's whew, awesome. Flamingo. I've, I'm really happy I get the privilege of being able to hear Eagle all these. and hummingbird. Read out loud. Salmon. Blue whale. Oh. Who, who would want an audiobook of Lola reading the guidebook? <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. This one's like, ooh, Best boom. time stories, those animal stories from Lola. <laughs> <laughs> I say yes, as long as Mabachi. I have a quiet space and no children interrupting me. <laughs> I love the badger, because honey badger don't give a shit. You may or may I not. I love that raccoon, too. Yes. That raccoon awesome the raccoon is what this started, is what started it all. our connection with tanya t gray this, ah. this little silly man or woman gorilla or whatever it wants to and be. The, the fun challenge of this for me is not all of these animals are animals i have met before in a journey sense uh in an energetic sense and so i got to go back to my old processes of getting to know what animals messages are as i was getting the tarot downloads as well and so that's been really <sighs> Wow, really fun. so pretty. There's bison for power. That's beautiful. Aren't they gorgeous? Yes, I and I like love scream. the color choices. They're exciting. Yeah. They're, and oh, they're very vibrant. Master of fire. I love lion. We kept lion and lioness together. There's cheetah. These are some. Our two of our decks are getting mixed together now, but we'll <laughs> separate them out because Tanya needs to get hers. Yeah. I love this. So this is uh, the Hermit Retreat. The Catacall. Elephant. Spider. I love the skunk. One of the first ones. So you're getting a pretty good taste of what these have in store for you when you place your order. They're beautiful. They're art pieces. They have so much energy in them. And the writings really speak uh, so much. I love that squid. <laughs> yes. oh, octopus. octopus. I octopus love octopus and jellyfish. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! I am. I love those are two of my favorite animals. So those pictures are so amazing. Destiny. Yes. Card number ten. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wheel of Fortune. Yep. Jellyfish, because you know you got to go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it has been really astounding because not all the animals, like I said, are ones that I was familiar with. And so I really had to have that inner trust that they were going to get paired up with the cards correctly. 
And that was scary um, because tarot people know the tarot and love the tarot and respect the tarot. And I did not want to do that a disservice. Um, They can get very, very um, grouchy (laughs) about it. (laughs) Yes. And so I didn't want to like have that imprison me and hold me back out of fear. But also I didn't want to dishonor the tradition. And also right. like, put the wrong animal in the wrong spot. Like that just felt icky. And so there's been a few little minor adjustments as we've come forward and been like, oh, that animal actually belongs over there and this one belongs over here. Um, but it's amazing what magic can be made in a simple spreadsheet. You know, like here's all the cards. Here's all the animals matching cells, clicking and co- copying and pasting. And, and there they are. That's how they got paired up. Wow. <laughs> Anything else that we're missing from our ma- magical agenda for the day? Nope, I'm not seeing anything that cool outside of. So anything. y'all can look for us on Facebook Live one more time, which is going to be at 11 11 a.m. on Wednesday, which will be the 24 hour countdown to launch of the Kickstarter, and uh, we have our external Kickstarter goals and stretch goals to get some really awesome features added to the book and just extra zhuzh to the deck itself. Um, and then we have our own internal crazy ass goals for really reaching um, so many people with this magic. So help us spread the word. Definitely buy a deck for yourself if you can. And um, we look forward to seeing all these animals take off in the world in this way. It's been such a long time coming and you know, thank you to the tarot lady, Teresa, for being here and being such a strong advocate for us and doing your magic in the world and all the forms that you do. It's thank awesome. you for having me today. It's been such a pleasure. And you know, I was just Aww. dying to see what this deck looked like. Know, so right? ah! I'm already, I'm already ready for the Kickstarter. Yes, boom, boom, yes, boom. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's what we like to hear. It's going to be a blast. We're having so much fun designing it and playing with it. And I really enjoy this. I'm looking forward to like second edition and. Just, oh man! Just growing I mean, it because it's so much that we it. can play with. This could be all we do. And we're talking about an great. in the deep um, expansion suit where you could swap out a suit. Mm-hmm. I have a dream of having one mm-hmm. where you could have like Australia or like Southeast Asia, and you could yeah. choose how you want. But we'll see. We shall see. We have eight number eight, eighteen million <coughs> ideas. Yes. And some of them will take flight, crawl, swim, or uh, creep into your world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Much love. Please Much share love. and be stay well wild. and wild. And stay tuned. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.